Andrew Wiggins, let's talk about him because it's now his sixth season in the association. He's already the Timberwolves' second all-time leading scorer, Cat's third, by the way. Um, Wiggins was asked at Media Day how he's handled shouldering the blame for the Wolves' struggles. He said, quote, I felt like I was on the rise my first three years, and then some changes were made. Um, Nick, you were around that team quite a bit. <laughs> it is a former number one overall pick who's compiled the, I mean, look, the numbers offensively are, are as we said, second leading scorer in franchise history. Um, is it fair, though, to ask him to reach another level of his game? <laughs> Rich, you understand what that quote is? Well, Tibbs and Jimmy are no longer here to yell and scream at me, so I'm going to be better now. If I'm a Timberwolves fan and I heard that quote, I would go, oh, <laughs> no. How many more years is this guy signed for? How much more money do we owe him? Wiggins has a ton of talent, but you're telling me that he's going to be that much better because the atmosphere is such that the head coach isn't going to be on him and Ryan Saunders is going to say, it's okay, Andrew. You can be better. It's a, it's a whole di different atmosphere. And, and Carl Anthony Towns is going to say, yes. I'm going to play defense every night, and Andrew and I are going to lead the way every night just like we were supposed to. I am not buying the Timberwolves at all, and I am all the way out on Andrew Wiggins. I think his time in the league as one of those guys, oh, he, he just has all this potential to unlock. I don't buy it. I think that he is what he is at this point. I don't think he can hit another level. Mm. Wow, Nick, that was pretty ho cold, man. Tell us I, I watched it. I watched it. I'm, I'm not buying the culture change can make that big of a difference. Well, I, I can see a little bit of what he's saying in terms of Jimmy coming there and he having to take a step back. But as a player in the league, being a young player and you having to grow, you can't allow a new player to come in and stop your development. And I, I, as Nick said, he, that can't be a, a buyout for him. He has to continue to develop. That's been the pace that's what the team invested in. And he can't allow other players to come in and, and slow that growth down. Players are going to always join your team. You're in and you're out. But if you're on a pace where you're trying to be a star in this league, you can't say stuff like, Jimmy Butler slowed me down. Basically, it's what he's saying. I'll go ahead and say Jimmy now. I was going to say, it's clearly what he was alluding to, but Jimmy Butler was traded off the Timberwolves November 11th of last year. That's like the Still first, what, two, season. three weeks into the season? <laughs> so the well bulk of the season last year was without Jimmy Butler. I'm not sure that we're saying now from here, from today is the day of my life without Jimmy Butler. Yeah. It's, it's kind of hard. We've seen the flashes with Wiggins. There are way too many times where he just disappears. And I don't believe that now, all of a sudden, that's going to change. Things, you never know. Things can happen no, in Rich, this league. You so. know. <laughs> when you know, you know. And anybody who's watched Andrew Wiggins the last few years, they know. Rainbows, unicorns, we don't know what's going to happen out there. <laughs> Let's move to Miami. <laughs> um, the Heat announcing Tuesday that James Johnson will miss the beginning of training camp. Quote, because he fell short of our conditioning requirements. Once he fulfills and maintains those requirements, he will rejoin the team. Ira Winderman from the Sun Sentinel reporting that Johnson has been in touch with Heat trainers, but he's working out on his own at this point. Miami, really the only franchise to have this kind of conditioning benchmark coming into training camp, but they're pretty notorious for it. Scotty, are you a fan of this? Yeah, I'm a fan of it. Uh, I remember back in the years when Coach Pat Riley put that in, and you could hear all the chatter around the league from his players going into training camp saying how tough it is and yeah we got to come in in shape or we'll be getting fined but you know he, he 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 set a very good standard and I think coach Spolsters has really followed it and it's something that they believe in and you know they're just not going to tolerate it and I, I think that's what it should be about in professional sports if you're a professional athlete then it's important for you to stay in shape always uh I mean, look at me. I could still play if I could trick somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I have no doubt. <laughs> Everybody knows what Miami's culture is all about. It's not a surprise. James Johnson's career got resurrected in part because of that structure. Right. So if you're if you're the Heat and you're like, wait, why aren't you in shape? You knew what was coming. That that would be a little scary because everybody understood what Riley expects and what Spolster expects. And that he didn't hit that bar is would be a big red flag to start this season. Well, it's just weird. As you said, we remember the pictures of James Johnson, right? The yeah. Miami Heat does all those before and afters, and he's the one who had one of the like more recognizable weight losses, chiseling before and after. So he's been through this before. I, I, I don't... He knew what was coming. I don't know, but they're they're kind of <laughs> well. The older you get, him. the bigger the challenge. Gets. Well, yes, that's certainly true. I mean, they never no did doubt. that in yes. Chicago with you guys, did they, Scotty? 
No, we, we never really had that. You know, I think that um, me and Michael kind of set a standard that yeah. if you come in there, you were going to be ridiculed the whole season for being overweight. And, you know, you're going to get punished for it some one way or another. And we're going to give you some verbal punishment as well. I was going to say, I heard you guys when you got on someone, and that was more of a deterrent, I would say, than I, just being told go home. <laughs> I never said nothing about Stacey King. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't kill Stacey. Oh, no, Scotty. Uh, <laughs> Michael, yeah, Michael's tough. But, hey, this, truly, this is why the Clippers are going to be fantastic this year, for exactly that reason. Yeah. Because that tone is set now, right now at the start of training camp, and it will only grow stronger six months from now. Yeah, but I, personality-wise, Kawhi Leonard nor Paul George are like these two. Well, nobody's like these two. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. They got some D. <laughs> they, they do, but I'm not saying in terms of getting on uh, fellow players and the, the name calling. I've, I've heard some name calling. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For highlights and analysis, check out the ESPN app. And for live streaming and premium content, check out ESPN Plus.